Hey there folks, how's it going? My name is Lexi and I really like tabletop games. So much so that we sit down together once a week, every week, and we review one here at the gaming table. I try to keep my videos short, under 10 minutes, so we can both find our next game. If you would like to go the extra mile for the gaming table, in the description box below I do have linked my Ko-Fi page where you can donate to the channel. All donations go straight back into the running costs of the channel so it is always greatly appreciated. Today we are taking a look at a game from the Free League Workshop. The Free League Workshop is a small part of Free League Publishing. It helps support game creators who might not directly be a part of Free League Publishing but they are able to publish their works through them. We're also diving into a science fiction game. Traditionally, I am more of a fantasy fan, but I love dipping my toes into science fiction every so often. Today, we are taking a look at Death in Space. This game takes place in a universe collapsing in on itself, both in the sense of collapsing space and collapsing society. A while ago, a new gem was discovered which sparked an intergalactic war. While the war is now over, intergalactic travel is much rarer. Trade relations, cultural exchange, all of these things have significantly declined. Everyone, in, everyone is in desperate need of money, called here hollows. For many people, the only way to get their hands on hollows is through extremely dangerous illegal work. The main source of legitimate work is contracts. Contracts are one of the few legitimate ways of work that are left. Pretty much anyone can draw up and hire people for a contract. It makes it a great way to launder money for organised crime. Of course, there are also legitimate jobs being offered through contracts. Contracts are one of the only ways you can earn an honest living. Depending on where your contract takes you, and perhaps who it is for, your group of player characters could run into some really weird stuff. You get in the game manual a write-up of different locations in the Tenebris system, as well as some influential figures and social movement. I don't think if you are a player you need to read about all of these. Perhaps if you are from a particular location in the system, you might want to read up about what's happening locally, but there's lots of opportunities for a game master to take advantage of what is written down to put their own creative spin on it. Personally, if I was running the game, I would absolutely be using the resources for the setting in this book. There's some really interesting stuff happening in the Tenebris system, including different cults and religious movements rising up, and I think it's a really fantastic setting for a space adventure. We seem to be getting quite a few gritty industrial science fiction games lately. I suppose that can mean it's a bit of a hot topic at the moment. Or perhaps it reflects something about how we live today. I think the player characters having to jump from contract to contract to make ends meet does reflect something that a lot of us are familiar with today. Death in Space is a, another D20 system. Of course, not all D20 games use the exact same mechanics. For players in the game, if they want their character to do something which isn't a given that they'll just be able to do, you will roll a d20. The number you're trying to beat is a 12. That's generally the challenge number for most obstacles. In some scenarios, the player characters will have created an advantage for themselves. In these scenarios, the players roll two d20s and select the die which has the higher result to use. Inversely though, if your characters are in a bit of trouble, they're going to roll with disadvantage. That's rolling 2d20s and choosing the lower number. To find out what kind of character you might be playing, you can dive into the character creation process. This starts with calculating your character's scores. How this is done is you take a d4. You roll it and you record the number you rolled. Then you roll the second d4 and you subtract that number from your first number. This final result will represent your character's ability score as well as the modifier they apply to their roles. These four scores are Body, Dexterity, Savvy and Tech. It's entirely possible in this game 
from rolling a d4 and subtracting another result from another d4 roll that your character could have a negative modifier to their rolls. I think this does reflect the atmosphere of the game as the human characters can be pretty squishy and you're going to be wanting to work smarter to survive. The next step in character creation is filling out your character's backstory, then calculating some hit points, defense points, and perhaps choosing some equipment. It's a pretty fast character creation process. Once you've created your character, you do get together with the other players to create the hub of your game. This hub is your spaceship. It's also kind of where you all live and hang out. Creating a hub is as well a pretty quick process. Mostly it covers what the hub is good at and not so good at, but my favorite part is the background and quirks. This is where you decide or find out what your hub was up to before it got into your group's hands, as well as something unique it does which might not be the most helpful. If you're a game master considering running this game, I can easily say that this manual makes the process really smooth. There's little tables on the inner covers of this manual, as well as lots of little cheat sheets throughout for you to reference whenever you really need them. The brief introduction to the Tenebris system allows you to customize some parts and make it your own. I really like that in this game, your player characters could have a completely uneventful job, and then a job where something completely weird and potentially horrifying can happen. The horror isn't always guaranteed, which I guess to me makes it a bit more suspenseful. I did find out that this game was created by the same people who made Morkborg. I'm a little bit curious now to check out Morkborg, I'm not sure why I haven't before. Do you have any potential thoughts about how these two games are similar or different? I also really want to praise the design of this rulebook. It's very clear that every single part of this rulebook was so thought out. All the art feels like it was really thought out about where it should go in the manual and why it should be there. If you are a fan of gritty science fiction, then I think this one is going to be an easy winner for you. There's quite a few science fiction games running around at the moment in this subgenre. So I think if you're a bit tired of the genre or you're not a fan of it in the first place, don't necessarily know if this one would convert you. I do think the mechanics are pretty streamlined and fast to pick up, so it wouldn't be a hard one to bring to a table of new players. This game retails for around $35 US. I paid around $70 Australian, which is pretty equivalent for the exchange rate. Are you happy to have so many gritty science fiction games running around at the moment? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there a different subgenre of science fiction that you would like to see have its time in the sun? Please share your thoughts. While you're there in the comments, I encourage you to like this video. Perhaps even share it with a friend who you think might find it interesting. If you'd like to know when I'm next putting up a review, you can subscribe and turn on notifications. If you would like to go the extra mile for the gaming table, you can donate to the channel using my Ko-Fi page, which I've linked in the description box below. All donations go straight back into the running costs of the channel, so it's always deeply appreciated. I want to all thank you I want to thank you all for watching and discussing Death in Space with me. I hope you're all well, and I look forward to seeing you next time at the gaming table. Bye!